Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to go through the IGBT or insulated gate bipolar transistor. The IGBT is a combination of the MOSFET and the transistor. Let's move on to the details of the IGBT. As mentioned before, the IGBT is a combination of the BGT and the MOSFET. It is having a high input impedance, a low on state power loss and no second breakdown. One of the most important feature of the IGBT is that it is a voltage control device. Please note that it is a voltage control device. It is also known as a metal oxide insulated gate transistor. As you can see on the right side, the circuit symbol has been provided over here. And the IGBT is having three terminals. You have a collector, emitter and a gate. Let's move on to the structure of the IGBT. Over here, you can see the P plus substrate region present over here. It is a P plus substrate region. Okay, you are having a P plus region over here. Sorry, there is a mistake in the figure. It is P plus. The P plus layer is also called the injection layer. And the reason is that the P plus region injects holes into the N minus layer. The N minus layer is called the drift region. And the thickness of the N minus layer determines the voltage blocking capability of the IGBT similar to that of the power diode, the power BJT and the power MOSFET. In all of the cases, the N minus uh, layer is responsible for the, uh, deter, uh, for the value of the voltage blocking capability. Next, right above the N minus layer, you are having the P region which is called the body region it has been diffused into the n minus layer and above the p uh, in within the p region you have the n plus layer uh, n plus material has also been diffused into the p region now if you want to turn on the igbt you have to forward bias the igbt in order to forward bias the igbt you have to make the collector positive with respect to the emitter so you can see over here the collector has been made positive with respect to the emitter. But this is not enough to turn on the IGBT. If no gate voltage is applied to the IGBT, even though the junction J1 has been turned on because of the VCC applied, the junction J2 is reverse biased when there is no gate voltage applied to the IGBT. Once the gate voltage has been applied, the junction J2 will get forward biased and current will start to flow from the collector to the emitter. Let's see what happens when you are applying the gate voltage. The working is similar to that of the MOSFET. When you are applying a positive voltage to the gate, what happens is a negative is induced right below the gate terminal and this leads to uh, a positive being induced at the bottom of the silicon dioxide layer. So that, that is actually within the silicon dioxide layer. Okay. And because of this, an N negative charge is being induced within the P body region. So you can see over here negative uh, charges will be induced. This will form an N channel within the P body and it will lead to the forward biasing of the junction j2 and you can see that the electrons will start to flow this will lead to the uh, current to flow from the collector to the emitter so you can see that uh, the electrons are going to flow from the n plus region to the n minus region and the junction j2 has been forward biased the p plus region will inject holes into the n minus layer Effectively, you can say that the N minus layer is flooded with electrons from the P body region. Okay, electrons are flowing from the P body region and holes are flowing from the P plus region. Holes are flowing from the P plus region. So, this is basic the basic working of the IGPT. All of this has already been explained. So, I will move on to the approximate equivalent circuit of the IGBT. As seen over here, this is the approximate equivalent circuit of the IGBT. You can see the three terminals of the IGBT, the collector, the gate and the emitter. The emitter is present at the bottom. It was hidden by the brush. The resistance RD is the resistance offered by the N minus layer and RCH is the N channel resistance. 
you can see a transistor has been provided over here and it represents the p plus n minus and p region of the igbt and you have the mosfet as mentioned the igbt is a combination of the mosfet and the igbt this is simply the approximate equivalent circuit of the igbt let's move on to the exact equivalent circuit of the igbt all of this has already been explained now this is the exact equivalent circuit of the igbt you can see that there are actually two transistors and one mosfet is present over here the top transistor can be called as the transistor q1 and it is uh, representing the p plus n minus and p region and the bottom transistor can be called as q2 and it is representing the n minus p n plus region now if ic or the collector current is increased that means the whole current is uh, the current due to the holes is also increasing we have already seen that the uh, uh, n minus uh, region is flooded with the electrons from the p body region and holes from the p plus region so effectively you can see that the collector current is the combination of the hole current as well as the electron current okay that is mentioned at the top over here okay the uh, ic or ie that is the current through, flowing through the igbt is a combination of ih as well as ie ih is injected uh, is the injected holes and uh, ie is the uh, injected electrons from the collector now if ic is increased as i mentioned if the collector current is increased that means the hole current is also increasing and when the hole current is increasing that is the current due to the holes is increasing the drop in the body body region of the particular igd igbt will also increase this will effectively forward bias the junction that is uh, p plus p n plus region of the transistor q2 okay so uh, you can see over here that uh, when the collector current is increasing the drop present at the uh, body uh, part of the igbt will increase leading to the forward biasing of the transistor q2 and when q2 gets forward biased what happens gets turned on it will in turn turn on the transistor q1 and this will lead to the turn on of the whole igbt okay now so you can see that the uh, Uh, there is a parasitic thi uh, thyristor present within the igbt so you can uh, also say that there is an effective parasitic thyristor present within the particular igbt now it is a uh, it is a fact that the thyristor will get latched on or it will get turned on due to the regenerative action and it will get turned on when the current gains of the two transistors q1 and q2 the sum reaches unity okay we don't have to go into detail into the working of the thyristor that is why i am going uh, not going to explain in detail for those who are interested you can uh, refer uh, any power electronic textbooks okay the thyristor it is actually a combination of uh, two transistors and uh, the thyristor will get turned on when the uh, two transistors current gains the sum of the current gains will reach unity and that time the thyristor will get turned on so that is the similar case uh, so the similar case is happening within the igbt also so this has already been uh, okay yes this has not been explained now once the igbt gets turned on once the igbt gets turned on or latched up once the igbt gets turned on or once it gets latched up then the it cannot be turned off okay it cannot be turned off it can only be turned off by forced commutation of the current that is the current flowing through the igbt has to be forcefully reduced below a particular value only then the igbt can be turned off and if the latch up is not aborted quickly if it is not stopped quickly the excessive power dissipation will take place in the igbt due to the presence of the body region and the drift resistance due to the presence of the drift resistance and the body resistance what happens is that the Uh, excessive power loss will take place and this will lead to the damage of the particular igbt 
and latch-up will occur within the IGBT only when the collector emitter current exceeds a certain critical value and we should make sure that this does not happen or it will cause the damage to the IGBT. So all of this has been discussed. This was the latching up of the IGBT. Moving on to the characteristics of the IGBT. You can see that the uh, you can see the static characteristics as well as the transfer characteristics. The static characteristics is a plot of the collector current versus the uh, collector emitter voltage. And you can see that it is very similar to that of the MOSFET and the BJT. The graph is very similar. But uh, if you are comparing it with the BJT, in the BJT it was uh, with different values of the base current. But over here it is uh, it has been drawn with different values of the gate emitter voltage. That is the only difference. And you can see that it is very similar to that of the BJT. And if you are looking at the transfer characteristics, it is a plot of IC versus VGE. IC versus VGE. And you can see that similar to the MOSFET. Okay, I am sorry if I take the brush, uh, the graph will be hidden. Uh, you can see that similar to the MOSFET, if you are uh, applying a small gate voltage, the IGBT will not get turned on. The IGBT will get turned on only if the voltage exceeds a particular threshold voltage. That is the minimum voltage required to turn on the IGBT. If the voltage is below the threshold voltage, the IGBT will be in the off state. So this was the static characteristics. It is a very uh, simple uh, characteristics because we are familiar with that of the MOSFET as well as the uh, BJT. Moving on to the switching characteristics. You can see the switching characteristics over here. You can see the switching characteristics over here. What is the switching characteristics? It is the characteristics which represents what is happening to the particular device when you are suddenly turning it on or when you are suddenly turning it off. Now, we are familiar, we have already studied the switching characteristics of the MOSFET, the power transistor and, as, uh, and the power diode. And uh, we are familiar that there will be a on time as well as there will be an off time. That is, uh, suddenly the switch is not going to get turned on, suddenly it is not going to get turned off. There is a particular time interval, T on and T off. And you might be very familiar, all of these are similar to that of the MOSFET, BJT or power diode, uh, not power diode, BJT and the MOSFET. Now, the uh, turn on time, uh, it has been split into two. The turn on time has been split into two. You can see it over here, TDN as well as TR. TDN is the delay time and it is the time required for the collector voltage, okay, the collector emitter voltage VCE to reduce from the peak value to 0.9 of the maximum value. Okay, so the delay time is the time required for the IGBT to come down from the uh, maximum value to 0.9 of the maximum value or in other words you can say that it is the time required for the collector current to increase. You are going to turn it on. So the voltage is going to decrease and the current is going to increase. So it is, uh, uh, you can term uh, say that the current uh, time, uh, delay time is the voltage uh, time required for the voltage to reduce from the maximum value to 90% of the maximum value or for the current to increase from the minimum current ICE to 0.1 of the peak value. That is 0.1 IC. So that has been marked over here. That is the delay time of the IGBT during the turn on. Next we have the rise time TR. TR is the time required for the voltage to reduce from 0.9 of VCE to 0.1 of the maximum voltage. So you might be familiar that when you are turning on a switch, the voltage should be zero and the current should be the load current. But we know that in practical cases, it is not uh, possible for the voltage to become zero. So there will be a small uh, voltage drop within the uh, material because uh, within the device because of the presence of the uh, body resistance as well as the uh, drift resistance. So you can see that there will be a small voltage drop. And now our IGBT has been turned on. So you can see that the turn on time is the combination of the delay time as well as the rise time. Next you can move on to the turn off time. Okay, next let's move on to the turn off time. The turn off time there is a small uh, uh, peculiarity within the turn off time. It has been divided into three. You have an initial fault time, a final fault time as well as a delay time. Okay, so you have a, a delay time that is a TDF, 
you have a delay time that is TDF you can see that over here TDF you have an initial fault time TF1 and a final fault time TF2 okay now the delay time is the time required for the gate voltage to reach the uh, VGET you can just see it over here we are familiar that uh, only if the uh, IGBT uh, gate voltage exceeds beyond a uh, threshold value only then the IGBT will get turned on. So you can see that over here. Once the uh, gate emitter voltage reaches uh, the VGT that is the time uh, uh, the de delay time that is the time required for the gate emitter voltage to come down from the peak value to the threshold value or in other words you can say that it is the time required for the uh, collector current to uh, come from the peak value to 0.9% or sorry 90% of the peak value so it can be termed in two method uh, two ways then you have the initial fault time initial fault time is the time required for the collector current to come from 90% come down from the 90% value to 20% of the maximum value or you can tell in terms of the collector emitter voltage it is the time required for the voltage to increase from the uh, uh, minimum value that is VCES the minimum value to 0.1 of the peak value okay so it can also be mentioned that is the voltage increase has been happening over here then you have the final fault time that is TF2 that's the time required for the current to come down again from 20% of the uh, peak value to 20% of the peak value to 10% of the peak value you can see that over here 20% of the peak value to 10% of the peak value or for the voltage to increase from 0.1% of the peak value to the maximum value uh, applied across the particular IGBT. So these are the switching characteristics of the IGBT. Again it is a com uh, you have a turn on time as well as a turn off time. The I am sorry you have a turn on time as well as a turn off time. Turn on as well as a turn off. The turn on time is divided into two you have the delay time as well as the rise time and the turn off time is divided into three you have the turn off delay time the initial fault time and the final fault time and all of this are based upon the gate emitter voltage now you must uh, make sure that the uh, particular uh, IGBT does not get latched up if it gets latched up then you cannot uh, turn it off by re simply removing the uh, gate voltage because uh, it will be uh, the collector current will be very high that it cannot be turned off instantaneously and you will have to use certain forced communication uh, commutation of the current. So these are the particular uh, details about the IGBT all of these has already been discussed. Then in the next class we can study about the GTO or the gate turn off uh, thyristor. Please stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.